I'm not supposed to talk too much, I guess. But anyway, I was going out yesterday, and I went into CVS, and I, some guy go, we're both at the door at the same time. I go, well, go ahead. He goes, oh, thanks, Mike. And I thought I recognized him. And on the way out, he comes and he says, I'll see you later, Mike. I go, what? Oh, I said, I know, but I couldn't recognize him with the mask on. So this is good. Nobody knows who's got who. I, I, I think, you know, as we're in this whole period of time, that's, that's wow. It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, and, and I guess just a good reminder that says, as we gather together, it says how to pray for everybody. Uh, and I guess to remember as we pray today for the people who uh, can't be over here or there or wherever or home or the people that <laughs> you see with a mask on and say, don't I know them? No, I don't, okay. But maybe just to keep in, in mind today as we pray, you know, everybody who needs our prayers, uh, especially at this time of the season, as we celebrate today the Feast of, of Corpus Christi, maybe just to begin then, as we begin with all of us, trusting in the goodness of God, that we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with as, as we celebrate then, the trust in God, with the confidence, and, and I guess in a way of, of how to keep focused on the goodness, where we can get caught up so easily in the things that aren't too good or too well, and things that aren't always happening the way it should. Let's just pause and call to mind our own sinfulness and trusting in the mercy and the goodness of God. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nurture and nourish us with your body and blood. In Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you guide and lead us on our journey to your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. In glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace. We give you your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty Father, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. You are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, who in this wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger 
and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water from you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinance he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we though many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The reading is the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen. Amen. I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. For just as the living Father has sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unless, unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
I have a long way to go yet because I'm, I'm a little bit prejudiced. I, the, the Feast of, of, of Corpus Christi is a constant reminder that we are the body of Christ, not the flesh and blood of the historical Jesus, but that of the resurrected Jesus called the Christ. And there's a difference. When we were baptized, we became part of the body of Christ, as St. Paul says, that we are the body of Christ. Each time that we receive the Eucharist, we become more of the body of Christ. And I was going through part of it, I, I, I sort of, I go back and remember, well, some of the things. One of the things my mother said when I was a little guy, a little, little take growing up, I, well, if you don't recognize the, the accent in New York and Long Island, uh, a foreigner that I am, uh, when my mother said, you're going to turn it to what you eat. Because I loved, you know, I guess it was bad for me at the time, but I loved it. It was a um, piece of bread with butter and sugar on it. Oh, it was delicious. Uh, then I found out now lately, my doctor says the same thing, you know. You're going to turn into a cheeseburger. You keep eating that stuff. Uh, okay. So once they did the test, I said, they guess they're right, you know. Uh, and, it, and it just reminded me that we, we become what we eat. When we receive the Eucharist, the words that, that, that are said is the body of Christ. And we respond with amen or yes, I believe it. I believe that I am the body of Christ. Saint, Saint Augustine, in trying to I'll maybe explain it or express it out some way, uh, when distributing uh, communion would say, receive what you are and be what you receive. That each one of us is the body of Christ. Or as some of the saints have said, we are his hands and his feet. He has no body but ours now. We are and, and, and what, struck, what strikes me as part of that is, is if we really took it seriously, and I, I think it's, we don't, sorry, we don't take it that seriously. Um, we come at a time that there's a respect and a reverence shown for the Eucharist, um, for the tabernacle, that people will come and genuflect before a tabernacle as they pass through. Uh, and and we, we find it, you, know, you can always tell the Catholic Church, right, because of the tabernacle and the red light burning. Um, I said, but isn't that who we are? When you receive, you are the body of Christ. And what would happen if we had that same respect, that same attitude, not only for ourselves, to see that, wow, can you imagine if it's, it's real? You are the body of the risen Christ, but so am I. And so are the people around us. I'm not quite fully there yet. I, I don't get it that everybody is. Like I said, I'm a little bit prejudiced. You know, and some of us are right-handed. Some of us are left-handed. Yeah, some people have different opinions than I do. I don't know how they can be so wrong. Because uh, I, have, I have my opinion, and I'm right. You know, it's, it makes it very difficult. Uh, how, can they be not, how can they be that ignorant? And I have a long way to go yet in seeing people who think differently, who live different lifestyle, who act differently, 
who see life from a different perspective. And yet, as we come each week, eh, except for a virus, we come and get renewed that I am, that we are, that the people who come, we are the body of Christ. I, I, I find that so true in celebrating the Eucharist. The, the, uh, there was a, well, a, little, a little controversy, a little debate that took place. What's the most important part of the Mass? And there was a whole group of people that said, obviously, the change that took place in Vatican II was uh, how much more uh, the Bible, the liturgy of the Word. I go, well, how about the Eucharistic prayer? You know the words of the Eucharistic prayer, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it all depends on which one you're reading. And what it says, I think, is we bring our gifts to the altar. And what are they? Who we are. We are a gift of God. We bring these gifts up and we offer them. And we ask God through the Eucharistic prayer to take the gifts we offer and, and to transform them. We ask God to send the Spirit to take the bread, in, the bread that we are and transform it into the body of Christ. So much so that like even today, I think someplace behind me, uh, will incense it. It says, these are sacred gifts. You are. And we ask God to change us each time we celebrate Eucharist so that we can fully become who we eat and what we receive, the body of Christ. And, and I'm just totally enamored with the words that, that says, and then we take the cup of blessing. The wine becomes the blood of Christ. And to me, that becomes how we live, what we experience, who we are, what we go through, the blood, the blood of our own life, the good and the bad, the hopes, the dreams, all that makes us. Because when we lose that blood, we don't have life. And we take all that transpires and transforms us, our own blood, and we get it transformed so that our sacrifice becomes a total gift and offering to God. So we're not all right-handed or left-handed, but as St. Paul said, we are all blessed and we're all gifts. That if every one of us lived what we receive, if we became what we receive, what we eat, eat his body, drink his blood. If we become that, we have the same mission that Jesus had, to go out into the world and transform the world, change it. I, I just can't imagine what would happen if everyone who went to church on a Sunday lived and fulfilled that mission. And they said, I'm not there yet. I got my own opinions yet, and there might be some that don't agree with me. I might see things differently than I see them. And so what I need to do is each week is to be reminded of it, to be renewed, to be changed, to be transformed, to grow a little bit more in recognizing um, that left-handed people, you know, well, I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> We, I was talking to my sister, who used to be a teacher, and uh, said, you know, remember if you went to school and you had the desk, you had a, a left-handed people were given, they had a hard time writing because the, the arm on the desk was the other side, and you go, I, 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 imagine if they all gave us left-handed desks. We would never learn how to write. But that's who we are. Each one of us is unique and special and blessed. Each one of us is what we eat and receive. Each one of us is the body of Christ in this world. And if we have that belief, if we have that same respect for one another, what a difference it would make. 
we would be able to carry out what we pray in the Our Father. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That we become the living presence of what we celebrate today, Corpus Christi. That we are, at this moment, the living body of Christ. And hopefully, I grow a little bit more in recognizing and believing and seeing and accepting that even the people who don't agree with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're the body of Christ. Ooh. Wow, I still got a long way to go yet. But hopefully we get there. And maybe one day we Yeah, my mother was right. We are what we eat. And we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, one, visible and invisible, only begotten Son, from the Father before all ages. and was buried and rose again on the third day in fulfillment of the scripture. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father to come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Kingdom of I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, brought peace in the Father and the Son, and the Father and the Son glorified. He has spoken through the prophets believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and the life of the world to come. And just, I, I just before the, the prayer, just was supposed to make a few announcements that if you can remember. Uh, at the time of communion, no, I'm supposed to do this later, but I'll tell you now and remind you. That everyone who was to come up at the time of communion, even those not receiving, and those and would have come up and ask for blessings. Everyone has to follow through so you don't step on anybody. Uh, and that if you are receiving on the hand, to not take off your mask in front of the minister of communion, but to take the communion in your hand and to walk six feet away, then take off your mask. And, and I just, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get in trouble for this stuff, right? You know, and unless you're in Target and it's okay, then, right? But other than that, in church, you can't do that. But if you're in a grocery store, uh, yeah, I give it another two weeks, and yeah, hopefully we'll change. Because uh, <laughs> you can even eat inside now. Okay, great. Um, the end of man. Okay, uh, those receiving on the tongue to go at the end of communion line. Okay, remind, I'll remind you. Well, let us ask God then to sustain us in our life journey by Jesus, the living bread. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That through the gift of the Holy Eucharist, members of our church will know that the Lord Jesus, who loves us, is near. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of nations to remember that Christ is truly present in all people, in the poor, the migrant, and the unborn, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all our children, young people, and adults, who now that we are able to gather again at church are planning to receive their first communion this summer, may they and their families come closer to Christ through the Holy Eucharist and their preparations to receive at this time. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For a blessing upon our oratory chapel where we keep the blessed sacrament visibly displayed in a monstrance for prayer, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for a blessing upon all of the efforts of our parish staff in trying to minister and to make our campus safe during the COVID-19, for determination, creativity, and a commitment to find ways to help people grow in faith, even in the midst of the challenges of the day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the sick may be lifted up by the love and care of those around them. We remember all those prayed for through our parish oratory, the prayer network, and the bulletin, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be seated at the banquet, fe at the banquet feast of heaven. We remember Al DePompo in a special way at this Mass, and those who have died in the past week, especially Michael Podowski, son of Nancy, Kathleen Talty, sister of Maureen Konchnik, Josephine Lucenti, mother of Frank Lucenti, Karen Minzer, and Donna Serber. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, satisfy our burning thirst for you and our deepest hunger within you through your body and blood. May our life's journey lead us to share in the joy of all the saints as guests at the banquet table of your kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread to offer, which earth has given you and hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to please be with you. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gift of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in the mystery and the offerings 
we here present through Christ our Lord. Will the Lord be with you? Then lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery. You make them holy, that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by the one, united by one united and one body of charity. And so as we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly gift, the realities here before us. Therefore, all creations, heaven and earth, sing a new song in their adoration as we, with all the host of angels, cry out without end as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of you. Hosanna in the highest. As he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, <clears throat> and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly ask you and implore you but by the same Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and his command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he blessed, said the blessings. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this and drink, we proclaim your death. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to the heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we look forward to a second coming. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, and your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence that we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your, your pilgrim church on earth, your, your servant Francis, our Pope, we am our bishop, and all the order of bishops, and all those who serve you, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously, then, to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters and all who have been pleasing to you in this life, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. So through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Mindful of his words, let us pray then, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. You can't do it, but let us share a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. May the mingling of the body and blood bring life to us to receive it. And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not going to enter under my roof. They say the word. And just remind follow the directions that you're supposed to know all about on how to come up to receive communion.
angelicus, fit panis hominum, dat panis celicus figures terminum, ores mirabilis, mandu catominum, pauper, pauper, servus et humilis, pauper, Set Panis Angelicus, fit panis homilum, dot panis celicus. Vigor is terminum, ores mirabilis, manducat dominum, pauper, pauper, servus et humilis, Servus et humilis. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we might delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I'm you, don't be seated for a minute because you're going to have uh, uh, someone who's better looking than I am and a little bit more intelligent than I am, Mr. Trey Bart, who was just was going to be the seminarian. Uh, to come up, so if you could all be seated, because one of the great things I always found that so many years ago, when I was in first theology, and you landed up working in a parish, you remember everything, and how wonderful and great the people are in that parish, and it stays with you, uh, well, my, what, 52 years now, uh, so be nice to him, because he's going to fall in love with you and remember you for 50 years. Trey, welcome. So no pressure. <laughs> well, good afternoon, Holy Family. I would like to start by thanking all of you for welcoming me into your home here at Holy Family Davidsonville. From the short time that I've been here, I can say that this has been one of the nicest parish communities that I have been given the privilege to serve. Since I know I am probably the only thing that stands between you and an afternoon cookout, or better yet, your first dinner out in all these long months, I promise to be brief. As you may have heard Father Andy mention during daily mass this week, uh, this is my first summer assignment, as Father just mentioned. Uh, in a parish after completing my first year up at Mount St. Mary Seminary in Emmitsburg. And what a unique first year it has been. Regardless of all the adjustments we have had to make during our second semester due to the pandemic, my first year at the Mount was and has been more fruitful than I could have ever imagined. To get to this point, it has taken me the better part of my 37 years to finally find the path that has led me to this vocation. 
which I am pretty sure God was calling me toward long before this point, but I kept sending him to voicemail. I was raised Catholic from an early age, but it wasn't until I had had the opportunity to live in the Holy Land for several months at the age of 15 that I started to take interest in my faith, which is kind of hard not to do when you live only several hundred yards from the Holy Sepulcher. That mustard seed of faith remained dormant for many years until in college when I was introduced to the teachings of St. Pope John Paul II and Matthew Kelly, specifically his book, Rediscovering Catholicism. At that point, my love of our faith grew exponentially. Despite this newfound love for the faith, at the time I was still holding on to the idea that I was being called to the vocation of anything but the priesthood. I wanted what the world wanted, a nice house, a good job, and a beautiful family. I spent years chasing those dreams without really asking what it was that God wanted for me in this life. Ironically, after working for over seven years for the Archdiocese of Baltimore and subsequently the Archdiocese of Washington, I realized that I was thirsting to serve the church but I was doing it on the wrong side of the equation. It wasn't until an unforgettable moment during Mass on a cold Sunday morning in December of 2018 that I finally gave up on the empty promises of the world, and I gave myself entirely to the promises of Christ and his church. Getting to this point where my faith has grown from the mustard seed of my youth to what you see before you today has been a struggle, to say the least. But as... It has also given me the greatest of joy. I now believe that spreading the truth of God's gospel is the holiest mission any of us can and are called to during our time here on earth. And for me, it is all that matters. Helping the people of the Archdiocese and the greater church as a whole live their lives to the fullest, now that is a life worth living for. We, the seminarians, are grateful for all of your prayers and know that we depend on them as they provide us the spiritual strength to remain steadfast in this calling while the majority of the world is telling us to give up give in or just plain quit however we know that there is more at stake than the world realizes which bolsters us to continue on this path one day after another one foot in front of the other this summer, I am blessed to call you all here at Holy Family, my family. And I thank you all for helping me as I begin this journey toward God's gift of the Holy Priesthood. If you would like to hear more about my vocation story, here's the shameless plug. We will be hosting a meet and greet after the 1115 Mass on June 28th here at the parish. I hope to see you all there and have a chance to meet you in person socially distanced, of course. And I thank you all again for your time, but more importantly, your prayers. May God bless you all. The Lord be with you. I gotta take that off, don't I? Yeah, I yeah. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and, like pray, to serve the Lord.
and its in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and 